Are you confused about which investing strategy you should take? I mean, should you risk it all like the GameStop investors or take it slow and steady like the passive investors? Well, what if I told you there was only one question you needed to ask yourself in order to find out? What's your favorite pet? Okay, now while that might not really make sense, investing strategies are actually a lot like owning a pet. You know how some pets require a ton of your time and attention, and then others you just need to fill up their food and water and you can leave them alone for weeks? Investing strategies are similar. Some require a ton of time and effort, and others are just set it and forget it. The investing strategy you decide on determines how much energy you need to use to be successful at it. So to help you understand each investing strategy and find the one that fits your lifestyle best, I'm going to break down each investing strategy based on what pet it's similar to owning. Passive investing is a set it and forget it investment strategy that requires a moderate amount of effort to initially set up, but then requires very little maintenance going forward. It's similar to owning a goldfish where most of the setup is in configuring your fishbowl and then after that you just need to remember to feed it. This strategy is so effortless because passive investors buy index funds and ETFs that track the market and hold them for decades. This works because historically the stock market has always gone up over the long term and after you've been invested for over 20 years it's nearly impossible to lose money. To become a passive investor, you need to open an account and build a well-diversified portfolio. There are several different ways that you can build your portfolio, and the way that you choose will determine how much ongoing maintenance it will require. Hand selecting your own investments requires the most effort, and that's because when you build your own portfolio, you allocate your money to different assets at certain percentages based on how risky you want your portfolio to be. Over the years, some of your assets will perform better than others, and that will throw those percentages a little bit out of whack. To maintain your asset allocation, you should rebalance your portfolio about once a year. This method of building your own portfolio is similar to buying a regular old fishbowl that requires frequent manual cleanings in order to prevent algae from growing. If you want to avoid all of this extra manual cleanup, you can use a robo-advisor or a target date fund instead. Both of these manage your entire portfolio for you, and so you can be 100% hands off. This is more similar to buying like one of those fancy fish tanks with the filter. I mean, you should check up on it and make sure everything's working and change the filter every once in a while, but it requires a lot less effort than the regular fish bowl. Value investing was made popular by the OG investor Warren Buffett. And it's when you find a company whose stock price is lower than what the company's actually worth and buy that stock on sale. To find these undervalued companies, value investors pour over financial statements, calculate tons of ratios, compare the company to others in the industry, and project the company's future growth. To be an incredible value investor like Warren Buffett, you have to use this information to make accurate calculations and assumptions, and that's not easy. I mean, if it were, there would be a lot more Warren Buffett's. Because of the extreme amount of effort value investors undertake in order to accurately price a stock, value investing is similar to owning a dog. As a puppy, dogs are a lot of work. You have to housebreak them, spend hours training them to sit, take them on a gazillion walks to wear them out, and replace a few pairs of shoes that they will inevitably decide to destroy. But if you put in all of that hard work on the front end, you'll end up with a well-trained dog that you can call your own. Even better is that as most dogs age, they get easier and easier, and the same is true for value investing. While value investors could sell their stock immediately after the price corrects, they usually don't. They're typically in it for the long haul and sometimes hold stocks for decades. And that's because typically the stocks that they end up buying aren't just undervalued right now, but also have good growth potential. This allows value investors to cash in on the short-term price correction and with zero additional effort, cash in on the long-term growth of the company as well. Trading is what comes to mind when most people think of investing, and GameStop is a great example of this. Trading is when you buy a stock at a low price and sell it at a higher price. And you might be thinking, well, isn't that the same as value investing? But there's one major difference, and that's the amount of time that you hold the stock. Traders look for short-term price fluctuations and sometimes only hold the stock for mere minutes before selling. This means they're constantly analyzing stocks to look for their next deal. If you're a trader, you can't just skip a day and leave your portfolio to fend for itself. You constantly have to tend to its needs, be at its beck and call, and continually feed it more money. For those reasons, trading is most like having a newborn baby. If you're feeling tricked right now and thinking, what the fuck, humans aren't pets, hear me out. While trading gets lumped in as an investing strategy, it isn't actually investing. Investing refers to long-term buy and hold strategies, which trading is not. It's a short-term strategy. So it requires the most effort and isn't even an investing strategy, just like a kid requires constant attention and isn't a pet. 
Even worse is that unlike with children, trading doesn't even usually reward you for all of your extra effort. In fact, well over half of traders lose money and that's because it's really hard to predict short-term price fluctuations without insider knowledge. Think back to GameStop. If all traders knew that the stock price was going to rise, they would have bought the stock before it did and then sold it before it dropped again. But many of them didn't. Once the price fell, traders lost a whopping $27 billion altogether. So just like it's hard to predict a newborn's behavior, it's also hard to predict a stock price's behavior in the short term. Overall, the amount of time and effort that's required to be a successful trader is extraordinarily high compared to the amount of time and effort required to be a successful investor. Because of this, trading can't even be compared to having a pet and instead is more like having a child. So now that you know all three strategies, which one should you adopt? Unless you want to take on the stress and risk associated with trading, I'd cancel that one out right now because you're probably going to lose money. So that leaves you with value investing or passive investing. And while you may be a dog person, I'd still recommend avoiding value investing. It's true that if you can find a stock that's undervalued, you can make a great return, but these hidden gems are hard and time consuming to find. Again, if it were easy, we would all be billionaires like Warren Buffett. So now that you've canceled out value investing, you're left with passive investing, which is the strategy that I use and recommend for most people. It's extremely low maintenance and provides great returns, but it can get a little boring. If you still wanna have a little fun with your money, you can use a passive investing strategy for most of your money and then set up a separate fun money account. To do this, calculate your retirement savings goal and set up automatic contributions to make sure you can hit that goal before retirement. After that, you can splurge on trendy stocks in a separate fund money account. By separating out these two accounts, you won't interfere with your long-term financial plan, but you can also avoid getting FOMO every time you hear about a new trendy stock. Because at the end of the day, your money should be working for you, not making you work for it. Save the hard work for raising amazing kids and pets. Thank you so much for tuning in with me this week, you guys. If this video helped you understand the different investing strategies and figure out which one is best for you, please make sure to give it a thumbs up because I want to be a rich bitch just as much as you and it helps me with the algorithm. I release a new video every Saturday that talks about investing, wealth building, and how to become a rich bitch. So if that is something that is interesting to you, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and I will see you soon. Bye.